Good morning, it's Judy. Well, hi and welcome to my channel. It's been a little bit, I'm a little bit behind time in terms of giving you an update on my diabetic journey and I haven't done a makeup video for a little while so I thought <clears throat> let's combine the two. So I've um, done my little makeup bag full of stuff and I've got it all laid out in front of me and I thought I would just go through where I'm up to. I've got coffee ready to go. And I just thought I, while I put my makeup on, I would um, give you an update as to where I've got in my uh, diabetic journey. So, <clears throat> let's get cracking. Take the glasses off because it's almost impossible to make one when you've got glasses on. And I'm just going to, I will try and tell you the products that I'm using and um, I will list them in the description box below. If you're interested, this, this is kind of a... Um, an Instagram hack that I'm testing out. This is the Nivea Sensitive Cooling Post Shave Balm, which if you read the ingredients list, which is on the box, not very helpful, um, it's mostly glycerin. And since a lot of primers are glycerin, um, I thought I would give it a shot and it seems to be working so far. Basically, it's just a slightly heavy moisturizer. So I'm starting with that and I'm then just going to use the Maybelline Baby Skin Instant Pore Eraser Primer and I'm just going to use that, it's nearly empty now, I'm just going to use a large P lump size of that in my T zone and down onto that noise. Right, so where have I got up to? We are now in, let's see, uh, next Wednesday will, today's Tuesday the 18th of July, next Wednesday will be our sixth appointment which means that I am now on to week 17 of the diet, I think. So I've done my 12 weeks of food replacement and for the last five weeks or so I have been on food reintroduction. And if you have seen my previous videos, which I will link down below about my journey, we have all of us elected so far to stay on a thousand calories because we were all quite enjoying the weight loss that we're getting. This is the Wet n Wild Eyeshadow Primer. You only need the tiniest amount. So yes. At our last meeting, let's start with statistics, right, uh, I started on 105.7 kilos is the baseline that I'm working from and last Wednesday, so six days ago when I weighed in, I weighed in at 83.3 kilos and I will display probably somewhere about here um, what that is in stone and how much the weight loss is since the beginning. Uh, it means that in the last fortnight, from last Wednesday until Wednesday two weeks before that, I had lost 5.1 kilos. And again, I will do the translations into pounds and stones there for you. I don't really work in, in pounds and stones because I'm a metric baby. So yeah, that's where we are at the moment. I... Um, we had a very interesting meeting with our dietitian who suggested that um, basically she says that, the, that if I can, my medical knowledge on this is not great, okay, I'm not a medical expert, I am a diabetic who's in recovery. So this is from my personal perspective. From what I've been told, what she told us and what I have learned over the years, there are several stages to type 2 diabetes. What happens to start off with is that the transition of insulin into the bloodstream gets blocked and that starts your type 2 diabetes. What happens after that as the, diet, as the disease progresses is that your pancreas reduces the amount of insulin that it's producing because it recognises that the insulin it's producing is not being used. So it gets lazy. It's kind of like if you've got a, if you ever had a laptop battery where you always left the battery plugged into the power 
and then suddenly a year and a half after you bought it you unplugged it and the battery's not working well the battery got lazy it wasn't needed so it just basically stopped working well kind of that seems to be what happens with your pancreas if it's not being used it stops functioning properly so by having done the diet not only have we reduced the barrier that stops the insulin transitioning into the bloodstream we've also kind of kicked our pancreases up the butt and told them to get on and do their jobs and the pancreas now that we the insulin that it's producing is transferring into the bloodstream more effectively the pancreas is now going oh right yeah that's what I'm supposed to do and is producing the insulin better now what I'm finding my personal experience of this is that it means that after I've eaten a meal my blood sugars are returning to normal a lot faster if Prior to the diet, if I'd had a, a massive meal, which let's face it, a lot of them were, I would find that my insulin, my blood, my blood sugars were still really high by the time I went to bed. So it kind of felt pointless taking my blood sugars before I went to bed. And that's one of the reasons why I was insulating at night, uh, doing my insulin at night was because then the insulin had the chance to work overnight and then slowly release throughout the rest of the day the following day I was, I was on 24 hour slow release insulin there are various different types of insulin and if you have diabetes of any description your doctor will advise you as to what the best form of insulin is for you to be on what I'm trying to say here is that I am now without insulin and you can be too if you are type 2 and you get the right medical support and help to do this. Don't try and do no insulin. If you're insulin dependent type two right now, do not try and cut out your insulin without medical advice. Anything that I am saying here, seek medical advice before you do any of it. Okay, have we got that clear? Right, so, um, she also said that we've now been on a thousand calories for five weeks and prior to that 800 calories for 12 weeks and what the human body does is that it slowly adjusts to the amount of calories that you're receiving and because we have a um, survival built-in survival mechanism your body then says okay this is the amount of calories that I'm ever going to get so um, I'm now going to cope with that and I'm going to make you put on weight because biologically you need more weight. We're in, now in a famine and obviously because you're not eating enough and we need to store as much as we possibly can. So her advice to us was that now we move, we definitely start to move up. So there were only four of us at the meeting, but we've the four of us agreed to move on to 1200 calories a day. And I think pretty much we were already there it's just that we were kind of we're still quite dependent on the soups and shakes and and ultimately what our dietitian wants us to do is move away from the dependency on the diet on the shakes and the soups so that we are eating proper meals seem to be neglecting the makeup bit of things so okay i'm going to use a powder foundation today so i'm going to do my um concealer first okay so here we go so the 1200 calories phase of the diet, if we're following what the book says, um, we're supposed to be eating two meals of between four, 360 and 400 calories per meal. Uh, and then one soup or shake and up, uh, two pieces of fruit, um, up to 200 mils of skimmed milk or the calorific equivalent in semi-skimmed milk um, and then as many free vegetables as we like obviously taking portions into account so my situation has now got to the point where I'm mostly having breakfast of some description and because I'm still finding the whole idea of counting up my 
breakfast calories, my, my daily calories, a little intimidating, um, what I have a tendency to do is pop down to my local supermarket where they've got those little convenience breakfast pots and one of those is about 230 calories and I can vary the flavour from day to day. It's all pre-measured, I don't have to stop and think about it, it's just there. And that's making my life easy. Um, this is the Pro Conceal HD High Definition Concealer by SFR Colour, which I had to buy off eBay Australia. But it was very I have a funny feeling, you know, we're supposed to be moving on to the food maintenance stage in another couple of weeks, and I have a funny feeling that most of us are going to probably still be going through the food reintroduction. But we've got to slowly increase our calorie intake. Right, so now I'm using a powder concealer that I made, which is just a shade or two lighter of my foundation. Nothing special about it is exactly the same
day and I'm fairly sure we didn't walk that far but it really just was so painful and I got home that evening and my feet were killing me and my daughter was exhausted and my sister was <laughs> in fine fettle um, being much fitter than I am um, and even fitter than I am even now but we had a great time that day and I'm amazed that that didn't Say, say to me then at that point you really need to do something about this actually I think it probably did it's just that I was in a place where I didn't think it was possible for me to do anything about it I just thought I was going to be fat forever and I didn't see diabetes as being a long-term thing on my horizon because I'd had gestational diabetes it had gone away uh, the doctors hadn't done the tests that they were supposed to do um, a year in so if you get gestational diabetes and they haven't tested you after a year, you need to ask them to test you. Right, so so I got a friend to take a photograph of me today. I'm wearing that same top and I want you to see. One of the things I noticed last night when I was looking in the mirror is that I actually have shoulders. You know, even, even in my ballet days, I had very slopey shoulders down. You know, all my friends had 1980s square dancer shoulders and I had these very you know mid 18th century slopey shoulders that you know, were the height of fashion in in Jane Eyre's time and earlier than that so yeah it was um it was interesting to come across that photograph it kind of pointed out to me that there there is an alternative way that I was living and I probably don't want to go back to that <clears throat> just a bit on my nose just a little bit where the sun not the sun where the light would catch my face so that I don't look completely matte right so now we're going to go in with a little bit of, I always do a little bit of eyeliner before I do the rest of my eyes because then this way it smudges out and it kind of blends in with my eyelashes so I'm just going to do a little bit of eyeliner under my eyelids and across the top lid but you know kind of only a third to a half way across this one is a Rimmel um, eyeliner coal eyeliner and it's got a smudge brush on one end which is really quite useful sometimes so now that I've lined my eyes just take the smudger end of it and just kind of blend that out a bit because I don't want a harsh line I can't do a I can't physically do wings and B, I can't carry them off. But what I can do is do a nice smoky corner. And I don't want to do too much eyeliner or it will close up my eyes and my eyes will start to look significantly smaller than they already are. I need to be careful to not smudge too far. So yeah, what more can I tell you about this, this whole journey? It's getting scary. The whole idea that I now have to not. Okay, give you an example. On Friday night, we went out to dinner. I went out to dinners with some friends to celebrate some friends' um, birthdays. Um, I'm just going to do my eyes uh, eyeshadows. Uh, these are eyeshadows that I've made. Um, so I'm just going to start and get these blended in. I'm going to start with my bone colour here and just set my eyelids with that bone colour. And I, I'd read the menu at the restaurant because I knew where we were going and I'd gone online and found the menu. You know,
at the end of it, I just, I could already feel myself starting to feel sick. Now, it didn't help that my daughter had been uh, off school sick Thursday and Friday, which is why I'm late on making this video. Uh, I'm going in with a darker brown now um, to just deepen that. And I had the I had a dessert. It was a sticky toffee pudding. It was really nice. Um, it had lots of beautiful sticky toffee sauce with it, and it really was very nice. And I really really enjoyed it. But afterwards, I really felt rough. And by the time Saturday morning came round, uh, a tummy bug had hit me, and I was sick. So. And I think part of it was that there was a tummy bug going around and I may have been sick anyway. But I think the richness of the food didn't help and the fact that I filled myself too stuffed, which again, I, had, I don't do that anymore. I'm fairly careful about making sure that I eat until I'm kind of like half full and then I drink lots of water, which seems to be a good strategy for stopping myself from overeating so I don't know what I was thinking on Friday night so I spent most of Saturday either in bed or wishing I was in bed okay I'm gonna go in with my my I'm gonna go in with this light purple first as kind of a transition over that brown to just kind of warm it up a bit these eyeshadows actually are really quite pigmented um, I did I've learned most of what I know about making my own makeup from a lovely website called Humble Me, Humble Bee and Me. And Marie is absolutely lovely. Um, I've also learned stuff from Susan at Points of Interest, and those two have been my main. being ill so yeah I have to say Saturday and Sunday weren't a huge amount of fun don't particularly want to repeat those again thank you but you know I lived and I'm here and that's all a good thing what else can I tell you about this scared so I'm finding that an awful lot of my meals are Carbohydrate is difficult, either complex or simple carbohydrate. And what I'm actually finding is that if I think of my meal as being a carbohydrate free meal, then what I end up doing is I end up loading the plate with vegetables my protein source and sometimes my protein source has carbohydrate involved in it somehow so initially when i went on to food reintroduction a lot of stuff that i was eating was i would buy um, skinless thighs packs of five from the supermarket roast them all up with a bit of seasoning on them uh, and i don't mean salt i mean other spices mostly chipotle cayenne that sort of stuff to just give them a bit of pep and and then i would serve it with a salad or i would slice it up and chuck it in with a stir fry or that sort of thing and i'm still doing that 
quite a lot. However, uh, what I'm now finding is that I can get a pack of pre-cooked noodles in a, a container and a half a container is one serving so I might do a quarter of a container and then my chicken and whatever vegetable I'm having with that and then that gives me my carbohydrate. Okay, we're just going to move on to mascara and before I do mascara I'm just going to put a lash conditioner on my lashes. I'm trying to encourage my lashes to grow and this is um, called Lip Hop Makeup Perfect Love and it's a eyebrow, uh, an eyebrow and eyelash conditioner and it's available off AliExpress but don't expect it to arrive quickly it will take four months it'll be cheap but it'll take you four months and I've yet to report back on how effective it is because I only just got it so now I'm, I'm being a little more adventurous because I've now got more calories available to me so for example last night I was down at the supermarket picking up some bits and pieces and they had some vegetarian and, and duck spring rolls uh, on offer so I bought a pack of each and I had two vegetarian spring rolls and two duck spring rolls along with the biggest plate of salad that you've ever seen in your life uh, and one of the lovely things about the UK having gone obsessive about this what they refer to as their five a day options is that nearly every pack of vegetables that you buy will tell you what they believe to be your appropriate portion per day so what I usually do is like uh, the cherry tomatoes, it's supposed to be seven tomatoes, is, is a portion of fruit or vegetable a day. So I usually load up 10 or 11 tomatoes to make sure that the amount that I'm having is more than I'm supposed to be having. You know, if they say that a...
so that we can verify where we are with that. It's now, it's become part of my life now. I don't, I don't actually stop and think that I am on this diet anymore. I get stopped on a regular basis and complimented about my weight. Um, that's usually just after someone says, oh, you've changed the hair color. Why have you done that? Um, I do that on a regular basis. Everyone compliments me on how good I'm looking um, and each time they compliment me on how good I'm looking I point out to them that this is a journey about diabetes and that the weight loss is secondary. What I do know is that I believe I am still just over 13 stone but I will confirm that and in fact you probably will have seen the statistics already. And they said to me, they asked us if we had a end goal in sight and I had to say to our dietitian to be honest no I don't have an end goal in sight I never thought that I would get down to just over 13 stone seriously never thought it would be possible again I'd kind of when we set out it uh, when we set out I was 16 I know I was about 16 and a half stone I was at 105.7 kilos, which is around about 16 stone. And I had it in my head that I wanted to get down to 14 stone. I figured two and a half stone was doable, and that was around about 17 kilos, 17, 18 kilos. So I was quite pleased at the end of the 12 weeks to have hit 15 kilos, bang on the target. Um, but I was a bit nervous about pushing it further to go down further and then suddenly something clicked in my head and the weight all just started to drop off and I really was losing weight faster than I had been and then last fortnight when if you saw the last video you'll see I dropped a huge amount of weight that, uh, over that the course of this last fortnight and that's been a real motivator for me to just keep going because I know that the further I fall the harder it will be to come back and I'm well aware that I don't ever want to be diabetic again because it's not fun anyone who's been on metformin which is the most common drug that type 2 diabetics get put onto will know that it, oh, I'm just using my homemade setting spray here, um, will know that it's a really rough drug on the old system. And it's, it's, it's really hard on the system. It, it, it's like having irritable bowel syndrome most of the time. You spend your life wandering around shopping centres, clocking where the toilet signs are, so that you know you, when you arrive at a restaurant, the first thing you do is work out where the loos are, and then work out where your table is in relation to those toilets. And you know, living your life doing that is tiresome. You don't want to live your life wondering what the plumbing's like, where you're going. You know, if, if I decide I want to go to, I don't know, Indonesia at some point in my future, do I really want to be worrying about what type of toilet's going to be there? No. So, yeah, I don't want to return, so I'm going to do whatever I can to make sure that I don't return. And if I go lower than I currently am, then I've got a greater chance of never going back up. You get my meaning. Other symptoms. Um, my restless leg syndrome is better. I still get attacks because it's a circulatory thing, not a weight thing. Weight does make it worse. But because it's a circulatory uh, condition rather than a weight condition. Sorry, just trying to find my glasses. 
I'm aware that it will probably never go away. But because I am physically fitter, the attacks are getting fewer. They still drive me completely insane when they hit. And I do need to do more exercise because I know I don't do enough. But again, it's, it's one of those things, um, having thrown my back out twice in the last seven months, that's something I'm working on. So anyway, I've rambled for long enough. There's my makeup on. I will list all the products used in the down bar below. Uh, I will link all my um, other diabetic journey videos uh, if you're interested in reading them. The first one is about 27 minutes long, so my suggestion is that you make yourself a cup of coffee and it will give you the history with a whole load of lineups of photographs. The photographs that I put up here will be minimal ones that I've, you know, that have been taken very recently so that you can get an appreciation of how things have changed. And I can't think of anything else that I need to add to this except that thank you so much for sticking with me through this. If you're one of my friends who knows me personally, thank you so much for the support that you're giving me and encouragement that you're giving me to help me move on and, and keep this weight loss going. I really do appreciate it more than you will ever know. Um, and if you're a friend who I'm making through watching these videos, write a comment below and let me know that I'm, I'm helping you out um, because it, somebody said to me last Thursday, I was down at the local garage and she hadn't seen me since February and she said to me that she was just gobsmacked and then she came out to me afterwards and she said, you know what, I really need to lose some weight and so I explained to her the whole diabetes journey and she said, yes, I've been warned that I'm now pre-diabetic and she said but you're an inspiration to me and I went why? She said well you know you, these celebrities you see them and they all lose weight and they all look fantastic but you know that they've done it with a lot of money, a lot of help, a lot of diets, personal trainers, all the rest of that. She said but I'm looking at you and you're an ordinary person like me. You don't have a special personal trainer, you don't have anything hugely special going on you're just an ordinary person and yet you've managed to do it and she said and that is far more inspirational to me than any celebrity could ever be so I was really touched because I just didn't think I would ever be an inspiration to anybody so I'm kind of glad that I am um, look I hope you're well I hope everything's going okay if you've got any questions about the program uh, about how I'm getting on please leave a comment in the comments box below I will answer every question that everybody comes up with if you like to hear more about my diabetic journey then please hit the like button and then click subscribe because I would love to keep you updated with how things go and I hope that you'll stick with me through this journey and actually the biggest the hardest journey is going to happen at the end of August when we go back onto full food and I'm no longer dependent on these soups and shakes. That's when the real hard work starts because I'm going to have to continue to lose weight, keep the diabetes off and not use my shakes and soups as crutches. So thank you very much for sticking with me and I look forward to talking to you again. Bye.